Tumors of the left main bronchus made it a closer look to assess the possibility of a pneumonectomy or sleeve resection. This bronchus is about 6 cm in length and sleeve resection is more likely to be successful on the left than on the right. Special note is made of a healthy proximal centimeter of mucosa required for clear resection margin. Laser and biopsy might be required initially for histological confirmation and investigating the possibility of a sleeve resection. Now let us assess this tumor, which on first impression looks like it is blocking the distal main bronchus. No bronchial orifices could be seen here. Zooming close to the tumor, a daughter mucosal nodular lesion is seen. It looks malignant. Further scrutiny reveals this is not the only malignant looking nodular mucosal lesion, there are others. The surgeon will be thinking at this point, can I get a clearance on the main bronchus, allowing an immunectomy? Soon these dreams were dissipated as further scrutiny of the mucosa shows involvement of the medial wall of the left main bronchus, to a large extent reaching very close to the primary carina. Clearance by pneumonectomy was therefore abandoned for laser destruction and radical chemoradiotherapy. This is a second example of referral for assessment for pneumonectomy. The tumor was histologically proven to be benign fibroma, locally invasive at the bifurcation of the two main lobar bronchi. These cases are the best suited for VATS pneumonectomy, as a ferris choice right out. The reason for that is the knowledge of absence of central invasion of the artery, vein and the main bronchus. Usually pneumonectomy in these cases is a breeze and a straightforward. As previously described, a stapling device requires 1 cm clearance from the origin of the bronchus. The mucosa should be scrutinized for this clearance and if there is doubt about clearance, then a bronchoplastic procedure should be performed as described earlier. The next clip is that of a man diagnosed with aspirating dental amalgam, whose chest x-ray showed calcification and collapse of the lingula. Bronchoscopy revealed this obstructing lesion. Note the sheen and the normal light reflecting over the mucosa. Also note the small capillaries or new vasculature over its surface. Although these are features suggestive of a calcinoid tumor, biopsy proved it to be a chondroid hamatoma. Exclusively, endobronchial hamatomas are very rare and they do not recur if destroyed by laser. This example emphasizes the importance of biopsy in designing a clinical pathway. However, after two sessions of lasering, the infective symptoms persisted, and further bronchoscopy revealed the stenosis of the lingular orifice. We tried to dilate it using balloon catheter and pneumatic pressure, but the result was not satisfactory. Therefore, the patient ended up with having Vance lingulectomy with good results. There are angles that the laser bronchoscope cannot negotiate easily, and this limits the ability of lasering what the clinician can see on bronchoscopy. Notoriously, lesions of the right upper lobe and those of the lingula are difficult to focus the laser beam on. On the other hand, upper division lesions like the one shown here are easily within the axis of the laser beam. An initial wire biopsy of this lesion obtained the diagnosis of chondroid hamartoma second time. Obstructing external compression of LB8 in the next example led to mucosal changes. Note the red injection and the small capillaries or new vasculature and the necrotic spots. Very little biopsy can be obtained from this tumor, and a deep punch with the wire biopsy forceps at the necrotic site gave the diagnosis of adenocarcinoma. Lower lobectomy was performed. The next example demonstrates a tumor completely occluding the left upper lobe.
The secondary carina is displayed and the orifice of the left lower lobe is stenosed irregular and lost some of its sheen. When assessing the tumor for resection, it became obvious that upper lobectomy will not end up in clear resection margins. Therefore, the possibility of pneumonectomy was assessed. To demonstrate the plunging test, here is a tumor occluding the left lower lobe orifice. During high jet ventilation via the venturi, it was noted to slide in and out over normal looking mucosa of the orifice, giving the impression it wasn't invading the takeoff of the lower lobe. The optical biopsy forceps was used and it avulsed almost the whole tumor. This allowed a better view inside the lower lobe, especially after washout with saline. Certainly the tumor was not arising from the common basal bronchus, but originating from the apical lower segment, LB6. This added information gave the choice of treatment by segmentectomy or lobectomy, depending on the final histology result. Without going this extra mile, the initial choice would have been pneumonectomy or sleeve lower lobectomy. For the sake of showing examples of bronchopleural fistulae, this is a left-sided bronchopleural fistula, 2 mm in diameter, exhibiting the staples at its orifice. As I was not sure about the communication with the pneumonectomy space, a standard guide wire was passed and the flexible fiber optic scope railroaded over it into the infected space. The patient was ultimately treated by thoracotomy, stitching of a vascularized intercostal muscle flap over the fistula and a chest drain for a week.